A state diagram is a visual representation of how a set of instructions, a string, causes changes in the internal state of a computer, or anything else that follows a process. But as the number of states and possible instructions increases, the picture becomes too complicated. So we want an algebraic description of the state diagram. We could formalize this concept as a finite state automaton. A finite state automaton, also known as a finite state machine, is a five tuple Q sigma Q zero delta A, where Q is a finite set of states, sigma is a finite set of symbols, Q zero among the states is the initial state, delta is a transition function, and there's some subset of the states that are called accepting states. Intuitively, a finite automaton takes as input a string from sigma star and processes them, possibly ending in an accepting state. So for example, let's try to describe the state diagram shown as a finite automaton. So our states are where we could be in the process. So we have P, Q, R, and end. Now notice that the automaton only knows what to do for a zero or one, so our set of symbols will just be zero and one. We begin at state P. Now we can choose any of the states to be an accepting state, and in fact we could choose as many states as we want to be accepting. In principle, all states could be accepting. For this example, we'll make the obvious choice and have just a single accepting state, which would be end. So in principle, the state diagram itself is our transition function, but we would like to describe it in a slightly more useful fashion. So we'll describe it this way. Our transition function tells us which state we end up at based on which state we start in and what our symbol is. And so we can represent our transition function as a table where our states form the column headers and our symbols represent the row headers. So if you're at P, then symbol zero will send you to Q, while symbol one will send you to R. If you're at Q, then 0 sends you to R, and 1 sends you to Q. And if you're at R, 0 sends you to Q, 1 sends you to end. And finally, if you're at end, either 1 or 0 will send you to end. To really understand this, let's consider a different transition function. Let's say the transition function for a finite automaton is this. Let's draw the state diagram. So note there are five states, A, B, C, D, E. So let's just draw those states as circles, which are labeled, uh, how about A, B, C, D, E? And two symbols, 0 and 1. From A, 0 will lead back to state A. And we'll represent that by drawing a loop from A to itself. And we'll also write a zero here to remind us that zero is what causes us to take this loop. But wait, there's more. We see that one also leads us back to state A, so we'll also add a one to this loop. From B, 0 will take us to B, and a 1 will lead us back to B, so we'll draw a loop and label it 0, 1. From C, 0 goes to E, and 1 also goes to E. From D, 0 goes to, and 1 goes to, And from E, which gives us our state diagram. 
While the kinetic transition function delta states q and symbol sigma, we still don't have a finite automaton. We need to select the initial state and the accepting states. While we can choose any state we want to be the initial state, we can choose only one, and so we'll choose d to be the initial state because it's on the left. And to notate that it is the initial state, we'll draw an arrow from the outside to d. We also need to choose some accepting states. And again, we can choose as many states as we want to be accepting states. This time we'll choose b and c, and we can represent these are accepting states by using double circles. And so this gives us a state diagram for a finite automaton.